and welcome to Macaulay Park Farm. Today's video is a short introduction to our goats. We have a boar goat stud here at the school. Uh, it consists of three breeding does. Uh, each of those will give two to three kids per year. This video is designed to give you a brief introduction to the goats so that if you're looking at joining the Young Farmers Club or if you're a staff member working with the goats, this gives you the basic knowledge to be able to do so successfully. Before we go into the paddock, I'll just point out that the gate needs to remain closed at all times. Anyone entering or exiting the paddock has to do so either as a trained staff member or as a student who's been trained in the presence of a trained staff member, which at this stage would be me. So welcome to our farm and let's learn a little bit more about the goats. Okay, well as you can see I have our goats behind us. Now today's a bit of a windy day and they're a, uh, they're a, a, a food animal so they will become very flighty if I try and approach them in the wrong way. So I'm going to take you through the three step process of approaching our goats. Basically, the goat's brain works like a two way switch. They're either engaged with you and looking at you, in which case you can approach them, or they turn away from you and that's an indication that they're about to run. Now having a pregnant doe like this running around the paddock being chased by people is not ideal and it can cause a great deal of stress and death to the unborn fetus. So we need to make sure that when we approach the goats we do so in the right way. I'm going to demonstrate the three step approach. Basically when they're looking at you walk slowly, when they turn their head stop, wait for them to turn their head to you again and continue walking slowly towards them. I had head turned just then, so I'm going to pause. And now she's re engaged. And that's a successful approach. Okay, so when we're handling our goats, it's really important not to put our hands, if we don't know the goats, it's really important not to put our hands up underneath their horns. Because if they lift their head back, that can break your fingers. So it's really important, you can touch them up here and you can touch them down along the wither, but it's really important when you're getting used to them not to put your hands in this region here at all. When we're handling the goats and we need to hold them still for any length of time, we never use the collar. Instead, what we should do is we should hold the horn and step over the goat. When we step over the goat, we can squeeze with our legs just behind the shoulder. Holding one of the horns will also help to keep the goat in the right position. You should never lift a goat by the horn or pull excessively on the horn, but the horn can be used to guide the head and point the goat in the right direction. They don't particularly appreciate being handled by the horns, so try and limit it, but often when you're controlling a goat on and off a trailer or trying to catch a goat for grooming, the horns are a good way to go. Never just pull on the collar because that will choke the goat. They're a very stubborn animal. Now as you can see our goats are really friendly and they're not malicious at all. They won't butt us. When they have kids however they will have bucks and they will have does. Young bucks should never be patted up on the front of their head. This encourages the, duck, the buck to butt and encourages it to play games of dominance. We don't want that in a young male goat. So by all means, with the ladies, you can pat them up here and they don't actually mind a bit of a scratch up here. They really appreciate it. But with a buck, you should never do that. Always concentrate on patting a buck in and around the withers and on the back. That's where they appreciate being patted. So a couple of features of the goat's yard that need to be pointed out. The first one is the water trough. The water trough should be cleaned out every couple of weeks. Basically this trough is constantly fed through a ball valve and it maintains a constant level. But the goats have feed and things in their mouth, that gets into the water and bacteria and algae start to grow. So every couple of weeks we have to siphon out the water container, scrub it nicely with a brush and a broom and replace it with nice fresh water. Every day the water needs to be checked because a pregnant doe or a lactating doe can go through as much as 10 litres of water per animal per day. So a trough like this will keep the herd going for a couple of days, um, but if it's not checked on a very regular basis, it can run out of water and it can lead to deaths in the herd, which is obviously not a good thing. When you're in the yard, also be very aware of the blue and white wire. Um, that's part of our electric fence, and when you touch that, it hurts. So try not to. 
Okay, so getting to feeding goats. You'll notice that there are two steel bins and then there's oat and chaff which is kept in a large plastic bin. It's a very simple process for feeding the goats. In the first of the bins we have seeds. In the first of the bins we have seeds. Now at the moment these seeds are things like barley and uh, sunflowers. We change them around because goats like you and I get bored with the same food all the time. Goats need half a scoop of the seed mix, just under half a scoop of the feed mix, put into a feed container every day. Then they need a full scoop or nearly a full scoop of pellets and muesli mix, goat pellets and goat muesli mix, put into the same container. Then they need two full scoops of chaff put into the same container. So you just think about doubling it each time. Half a scoop of seeds, double that and it's a full scoop of muesli mix, double that and it's two scoops of oat and chaff. So start at half and double each time. That then gives you a full day's feed for three does. That needs to be spread out across the four containers in the goat's paddock. If you don't put the feed in four separate containers, the dominant goat will chase the other goats away. The only other thing that you have to have in the paddock for goats at all times is a salt lick. The reason why we use salt licks in Australia is because goats aren't from here and they are lacking the nutrients that are found in soils in Africa in Australian soils. So particularly cobalt and selenium are really necessary for goat health. So the block has to be kept in the paddock at all times and you'll find that in the, in the goat's shed. Thanks very much for watching guys and I hope this helps you with your test.